So, the last time I was up here teaching, I got to introduce a new shift, and I get to do it again this time, so I was pretty excited about it, and it's about Jesus teaching us, and ever since joining the preaching team, uh, I learned to adapt my teaching. Mike introduced and enforced us to do this. No, he didn't force anything. <laughs> no, he introduced a style of teaching that was new to me and completely different, and I had to adapt to it, but it was good. I'm sure we've all come through something like that where we had to adapt as we've got a new job and, or we become an instructor, you're a coach, and you have to adapt in a way to teach the people, and you learned a new style. So it's very important to adapt ourselves, and today we're going to focus on that a little bit. So we're in chapter 13. God teaches us. So what is chapter 13 all about? So the crowds are still coming to Jesus. They're still congregating to him. They're still searching for something. They want something from him. But he begins to speak. And then this chapter, it's like the richest chapter of parables. He speaks in parables only to these people, to these crowds. So what is a parable? I'm sure most of you guys know a parable it's just a simple story, but with a deeper meaning behind it. You use everyday life to share a story, to give a deeper, a deeper meaning. We see that everyday life in these parables. We see how he uses farm life to explain some of the, to, to demonstrate these parables. But something we need to consider as we continue with this message today, take notes. If you're a note taker, this is a good time to, to write these down and consider these things today in this message. And as you study through chapter 13 yourself. Why did Jesus use parables? Why did Jesus choose a style that not everyone would understand? The message. They wouldn't all understand the message he's trying to portray. What is he teaching through the parables? What is, he, what is the subject? What is he trying to say? And lastly, what was his motivation to teach? So the purpose of parables, of these parables that, was DJ, that, that Jesus was teaching, the subject, the kingdom of heaven. He's describing the kingdom of heaven in a way to those who are seeking it, but concealing it to the ones who are not searching or oppose it. I'm sure we've all experienced this, or we've all seen it. Not everybody is going to receive the message of God or the gospel. And I know you've all experienced this and seen it. They fight against it. So I want to take a minute here of Jesus' shift, the way Matthew's writing. Matthew's writing what he's seen in his biography. And he's like, <laughs> I keep thinking about it. every time I study, he's like, man, this guy is so smart. <laughs> how he writes this down, how he, how he, com how he composed his biography of Jesus Christ. So there's a shift. Jesus is seeing, his ministry is seeing the opposition grow. He's seeing that people are coming, but they are not grasping, they're not getting, they're not tying that Jesus is a, has the power and authority. He is the king. Up to this point, Jesus has been proclaiming the kingdom is at hand. And from this point, he's been doing it. And from this point, he stops. Now he starts to speak and he starts to, to teach, his, teach his disciples in these parables what the kingdom is. What is the kingdom all about and what it's going to be all about until he returns. So the Jewish leader's opposition kept growing and the people were not connecting Jesus' works and ministries to his divine authority as the power and power as king. They were disconnecting the fruit from the tree. The crowds, the Pharisees were seeing what he was doing, but they were not connecting it to the tree. They were disconnecting it. So Jesus adapted. He adapted his teaching style to the crowds. So he would fill, so he would feed the ones who wanted the truth while distracting and confusing the ones who weren't searching or opposed it. One of the things I was thinking about, like, and he was sharing these parables, the, even the disciples just said this too, but the opposers and the ones not searching probably asked themselves, what is he talking about? 
when he's sharing these par parables, like, what does this mean? And for them, they're like confused or just like, whatever. I, I don't know. Just maybe give me some of that, that, that healing stuff. But then the ones who wanted it, who were seeking the truth, seeking the kingdom, they said the same thing. What is he talking about? I want more of this. I want to understand. I want to seek more of who Jesus is. What this truth he's talking about. Jesus knew that, knew that not everyone was going to hear the truth. And some would reject it. He cites here in Isaiah 6, 9 and 10. For they look, but they don't really see. They hear, but they don't really listen or understand. This fulfills the prophecy of Isaiah that says, when you hear what I say, you will not understand. When you see what I do, you will not comprehend. For the hearts of these people are hardened and their ears cannot hear and they have closed their eyes. So their eyes cannot see and their eyes cannot hear and their ears cannot hear and their hearts cannot understand. And they cannot turn to me and let me heal them. That truth is still so alive today, this sadness that people can't hear and can't see and understand with their hearts. But now for the ones seeking though, what a beautiful experience to navigate through God's teachings. Have you had those moments of revelation from God about his scriptures. I've had times where I've studied scriptures as I've just read through my daily devotions and I did not understand what Jesus was trying to teach me or what God was trying to tell me. There's been days and weeks and there's even been some truth that haven't been revealed for me for, for years. And then when they finally get revealed, what an experience. But the experience isn't just coming from the revelation of truth. It's the seeking of that truth the path to get to learn that truth. That's what Jesus is doing in these parables. It's what he's doing today. He's given us the truth, but he's ones who want it. And then they seek more and they want to understand it more. And they keep going. They keep knocking. What richness and wisdom comes from Jesus' teaching? Life altering. He knew how deep the knowledge was of these parables. That is why he spoke in parables. He knew that wrestling would create a deeper understanding of his teachings. Even the disciples had, had to ask more questions afterwards. These parables naturally make you ask more if you want more. Just as the parables engage the minds and the hearts of the Jesus listeners, they continue to challenge us today. Nothing's changed grapple with, we need to grapple with the meanings of the word of God, with these teachings of Jesus. These parables, they're not just stories. They're not just sitting around listening to all these stories of, okay, plant some seeds, leaven. They are pathways to the truth of the kingdom of heaven. So what is the motivation? Why is Jesus? So we know what the parables are for. They're for the kingdom. He's, just, he's describing the kingdom in a way for us to know how to live out this kingdom until he returns. But what was his motivation? We got to pull back. We got to look at obviously the bigger context here. One of the bigger contexts. Jesus came to establish the kingdom of heaven. He came to plant the first seed. He is the first seed and he's the one that bears fruit and plants more seeds. And he chose to plant seeds in us people, us messy people, not so smart people. But he knew that we weren't smart and he knew that everybody would want this. So he said it before us, but we have to come seek it also. But he's giving these truth and he's giving these, these parables to fill us with truth. He wants his truth to be in us, but he wants us. And is that we wrestle and we grapple with that truth? That truth becomes our truth. And when it becomes our truth, it just naturally and just happens. That truth pours out of us. We start sharing that. 
we start teaching that truth to those around us. God chose to bring his kingdom to earth through Jesus Christ and expand his kingdom through his people. Everyone here that's put their faith in Christ has a responsibility to expand that kingdom, to continue planting seeds, and those seeds to grow and bear fruit and produce more seeds. But with his infinite wisdom, he knew growing this kingdom is not as simple as just, just go do it. So he gives us these truths. He gives us a wrestling to go through and to dig. And he gives us the church. He gives us the spirit. And going back to the parable that Mike shared with us, the parable of the, the weed in the field, there's something there that he's setting for us, a setting that we need to understand. He's explaining that the children of God, the ones, all of us who pl- place their faith in Christ, are living alongside the wheat, the children of wrath, evilness. Good and evil coexist then and today and tomorrow. This is not a warning. This is not, hey, be careful. There's something more to this. Yes, in this parable, we see that he will separate the wheat and the weeds. And that's a hope that we have. The last thing he said in this parable, he who has an ear, let him hear. So sure, yes, be aware of the opposition. We're living alongside evil around us and combating against it. Yes, he wants us to be wise of this, but this does not stop us from continuing to spread his seed we are along the evilness and there's people there who have ears who are willing to hear and can hear. So as long as, as long as we have a breath in us, that should be one of our focus, knowing our setting that there's people right next to us who have an ear to hear. And there's some that don't. Our job is just to start planting the seeds wherever God has us and every day, the way you live it out. But Jesus is smart about this. He adapted. The crowds were coming to him, just like us. We're going to have crowds that come to us. Maybe just one person. Maybe you have a crowd where God sets you. But he adapted to his people, to the people, the audience around him. And he taught accordingly. So this is where my first exhortation comes for you guys. To the church. I know that we don't all function as preachers and teachers and public speakers, but you can all still preach and you can all still teach, I promise you. But in the way that God created you, God created us to be used in expanding his kingdom and lay the seed. God created you to be on the path to expand his kingdom. And we're all not on the same path. God's made a path for all of us, this diverse kingdom that he has. But in our paths that we go along that God has us on, Teach, preach. We all have an opportunity to teach. We all have an opportunity to demonstrate, to coach, or explain the kingdom of God by how we live it out. We have so many people here how we can live our lives out. I'm living out my function. I know God's given me the function of being able to teach and shepherd. So I'm living it out. Where does God have you? Where's your function? Is it just woodworking? Is it working on people's bodies? I'm seeing all the people here. You have an opportunity to demonstrate and teach how you live your life, the kingdom of God. But know your audience and your settings and adapt to the people around you. Hearts and minds all receive differently. Just remember, just think about yourself. You receive differently. Think about if you've been married. Me and Rebecca receive different things in different ways for sure. Consider that of the people around you. This will make you a more effective disciple of Jesus. Make you a more effective farmer as you plant those seeds. And I always want to say you start with your family. Parents, start with your children. Children, maybe you accepted. You have this seed. You have this kingdom, but your parents are. So consider your parents in the stages of their life. Think about your friends, your friends at work, your friends at sports, your friends at school, where they're at in their lives. 
Man, that guy is, that friend of mine is just really a jerk, sorry, all the time. But then if you become his friend, you figure out there's something not right at home. So teach him and demonstrate the kingdom in a way he needs to receive it at that time. And your co-workers, your teammates. And I know this not, won't be for everybody, and that's completely fine, but be ready to share the kingdom with strangers. Not everybody's called to do that, and I know it's, not everybody has that function or that ability to do that. I've learned to do that because I think God's given me that function, but of 10 years of being a technician, it's been some years now, but I've been 10 years as a technician going to people's homes in the Northwest and in Florida. Let me tell you, 10 years of going to people's homes, you get to meet a lot of different kind of people out there. But, wow, uh, that was God's path for me. He let me experience all that. So now, when I get to talk to a stranger or a crowd or my family, those things have helped my path to where I'm at today. And with this, with strangers, with all these people, all these people in your life, you have to be prepared. And we'll get into that a little bit more, but you guys should be preparing for any moment in your life to be sharing the kingdom with others. I want a reminder there, a disclaimer. The audience and methods can change. How we present the truth can change, but we stay faithful to the message. The gospel never changes, guys. Don't water it down. Don't change it for somebody. You stick to that. Those are the tracks you stick on, but adapt to the people around you. These truths of these parables was for then, for today, and for tomorrow still. Take these truths as guidance and hope. Not necessarily as, not necessarily as a warning. And keep teaching. And whatever path that God's put you on, keep teaching, preaching, living out the truth of the gospel. Because we do it out of love. And obedience for our king who first loved us and taught us. My last, exhort last exhortation for you guys. The way that Jesus taught and he adapted, but he did it in a way to wrestle. So I exhort you guys, I encourage you guys, wrestle with the word of God. Whether you use your Bible, you use a smart device, piece of paper or journal take the time to wrestle with the word of God seek a deeper understanding of the kingdom of God through learning and through teaching that's how we're going to get better at learning the word of God is by learning it but teaching it one of the things I've always been taught for many years I think my dad taught me this if you want to learn something teach it if you want to learn that really well, go ahead and start teaching it. Because then you start grappling with those, that message. Just like today, this message I've been prepared. I've been grappling with it. And I have been taught. And now I'm trying to share it with you guys. One saying I've had for some time now, though. And I don't remember how I got this, if I just developed it or heard it, read it. If you're not spending time in the Word of God... You don't understand God's language. God is bigger than that, of course, but as you spend time in the word of God, that is his language. That is the language he speaks to us. That's the language we speak to others. That's how we are, are uh, communion with God and with others. So spend time in the word of God. Make his language and his truth your language and your truth. Now, as you can tell, we, we didn't open up our scriptures and go over these parables. because I'm sure most of you guys have seen them and read them or heard them. But I want to encourage you. Throughout this next week or the next time, sit down by yourself. And with the message you heard and some of the notes you've taken, read through these passages and wrestle through these parables. Do it with your family. Whether you're the adult or you're the child, get your parent in it. Like, hey, let's study this. Get your friends. If you have an open business, get your coworkers at work on a lunch break, however that works for you. 
and wrestle with these pieces. The beautiful thing about wrestling with the word of God, he intended it to not just be internalized, but to be done in community. I also want to encourage you, maybe as an idea, I want to throw a couple ideas out there. Open up your Bibles and read all the red words. See what Jesus is telling you. And my last couple things is, and it's not for everybody to understand this. Read books that build your faith, build your knowledge of the word. Listen to podcasts. Watch a YouTube of some really cool teacher out there. For me, I have a couple of, for me, I found reliable preachers and teachers. I like to listen to them because they're different or they just, the way they teach really just stir my heart. And there's even a podcast I listen to that they purposely have different aspects of scriptures, different ideologies from different professors come to the podcast. So they'll bring an idea and they'll bring two different people, smart people of that, of that doctrine or ideology, and they'll actually present theirs. It's not a debate. They take different episodes. For me, it's like, wow. It makes me consider my understanding of the knowledge of God, the knowledge of his word. You need to consider these things because these are the knowledge that we have here. This truth that we have here is what's going to come out of our mouths on how we live, how we walk our lives out. But please, 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 please listen to me. Don't read your Bible because you have to. Don't do that. You'll miss out on so much. This Bible, this word of God that we have, that he's trying to more than just teach, he is trying to have a relationship with you. So that time you spend in the word, that is building your relationship with Jesus Christ, with our God. So spend time in that. And as you go into that, go with that mindset. I want to spend time with my God. So as you go into the word, think about that. Feel that. It's like, I'm going to hang out with my king. I'm going to hang out with my teacher, my rabbi, my God. Do that. And these things I'm talking about, these adaptations in learning, really came uh, alive to me. It was really awesome. And just another thing that God took me through was um, to get more in details about when I joined the preaching team, man, what an experience that was those first few months. The first few months, it was us just talking and learning. Uh, Mike just teaching through a couple of things and, and the style of teaching that really adapted and really changed how uh, now I teach, but not just how I teach, but how I teach my kids or how I want to talk with Rebecca. I've, and, I'm, and it's still being adapted, but I now take the time with this style and I say, I'm going to just try to stick to this one thing when I speak to this child or when I speak to my wife. I'm going to try to stick to this one way of talking. I don't want to bounce around just to this one way. But the crazy thing that we're talking about the community, about adapting. Before the preaching team, I had been preaching for some, some, some years now. I, I used to be a pastor of a youth group. And I helped in the last couple of years, I started um, teaching, the, helping with the congregation teaching. But I never was in a setting with other people to study the word of God. So when Mike and Heather went on sabbatical, and it was just those few guys there, Man, how that altered me, how that, how I had to adapt. The cool thing was there's different age levels, different backgrounds. There was some college degrees and some not college degrees all coming together, but that had, who cares? That adaptation of to be there, to willing to listen to them, me willing to speak up, but coming together and adapting to this new method how that's altered the way I look at scriptures and even teach. And just like, just like what Jesus did, he adapted to his audience in your settings. And that's why I want to leave you guys with adapt to your settings, adapt to your audience, but stay faithful to the message. Let us pray. Lord guys, I just want to thank you so much for this message. The Holy Spirit that was in me spoke out and the Holy Spirit that's in us was listening. Thank you. Lord God, I ask now that you 
but put before people here, before your people, words and a message to grapple with. You are given an experience to wrestle through your word, to grapple with it and to make it their own. And make us aware of our surroundings of our families and friends and strangers around us. And I will be always ready to prepare, be prepared to share your word and plant seeds as you guide us, Lord God. I ask these things in your name, Jesus Christ. Amen.